Okay. Mic is rolling, wherever it is. Mic is right here. The microphone is to pick up audio that is that we're sitting here. I'm gonna turn that off before this guy totally convinces me that D and D is kink. Is it not? <laughs> Hello everyone! Before I get into this review, Krieger Margin decided to check out before the review ended because he had to go to bed. Which you know I he does. will I will pick up his number for this review right here, right now, for editing purposes. Here is Krieger Margin's review for Terminator 2. And now we are now going to continue with our review of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. As my cat kicks my phone off. That's with, it. with my usual cohort who is hogging the camera right now. Did you introduce yourself? Did you introduce yourself? With my usual cohort who hogs the camera right now. Orphan Joker. And our guest for this review. And hopefully uh, continuing uh, co-host Logan Dakari. And this is Mike Jack 95 and we are continuing our review for the Terminator series starting with... As Joker said, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Before we get into our thoughts, I'd like to share the ratings and the box office numbers for this movie. Critics rate this film, as of current day, a 9.3 out of 10. Audience rate this film as a 9.5 out of 10. Box, oh, I should do budget first. Budget range, budget at max number from what I saw was between 94 to 102, 102 million dollars. So I just put 102. Now let's so just, let, let let's say uh, the theatrical cut would be the 95. You said yeah. And the extended edition would be the 102. The extended edition, which we watched, the extended cut was 102 million dollars, and the box office that they got back was 520.9 million dollars. That's making bank right there. That yes. is. So much more money than the first film. Wasn't it the highest grossing film of all time at a certain point? For a very long time, yes. Yeah. Now, I do have some trivia, but I would like for the newcomer, the new Terminator fan, the new Terminator viewer, to step up and share his thoughts on Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Hasta la vista, baby. What are your thoughts, Joker? I'm going to go with the things that I didn't like in this movie first, because it's, it's small. It better be. The audio for the Mr. Young Man and his squeaky voice that we don't get to enjoy Edward. because it's edited. <laughs> yes, Edward for long. I mean, that's Ed not his fault, though. It sounded, his, a lot of his lines sounded, I don't want to say fuzzy, but like distanced and in a box. Hold on, so you're saying his, you got a problem with the fact that his voice wasn't ambient to the environment. Yes. His, 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 it makes it. You can tell that it's, it's, it sounds I can tell like it was off until you guys explained that it was recorded later. I was like, "There's something wrong with his voice," and it's bothering me. Yeah. It's, it sounds like they finished the movie and then they threw him in the mm. room after he got done hitting puberty and was like, "Record these lines real quick." I think there was only one other thing, and that was the 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 weird squishy metal sound when they shoot T one thousand. T one thousand. Because like, it, it, anytime they shoot him, it doesn't make the and then just all of a sudden, when they're in a car chasing scene, it's like, like, like why add that sound? It was no, it's like shooting Jello. But it's it's it, it's not that that sound doesn't exist, and it's not that that sound wouldn't be there. But it's that sound is only there in a scene where you wouldn't be able to hear it to begin with. So why would you hear it? And why would it be so loud? And after I complained about it, it got louder. But you don't hear it in any before or after scenes where he gets shot. He's just plan. This is the thing that's keeping it from being an eleven. Hey, fuck you! I'm the only one who gives eleven. So that sound doesn't, shouldn't be there. I feel like that was there was there was a, a a choice in somebody who decided this is a good sound to have and have in this place, but it was out of place. I thought it didn't have any purpose in the movie. Kind of like if you watch, and if you haven't, link up here in the description to our Hill House review where we talk about the boob scene, which had nothing to do with the series. 
And one off weird. B and bouncing off of your thing about sound, there is actually one thing that actually kind of irks me. That hallway scene where the uh, Terminator and the T-1000 meet up and shoot at each other. A 9mm Beretta does not sound like that. It does not sound like it has a freaking fake suppressor on it. <laughs> I, I own a Beretta. I've shot it several times at outdoor ranges and indoor ranges. It does not sound like that at all. They're not like super big movie changers because there's always bad things that happen in that movie. But that would be a Cinema Sense thing. If Cinema Sense doesn't put that in his reviews, then I need to call up and be like, boy, the sound is so off. So I will put a link to Cinema Sense D2 review if it's here right now. So, uh, things that I liked about this movie when you see Arnie and T1000 fight. The, we, we already know which one's a good one, which one's a bad one, but having that terrified Sarah Connor scene is good because that brings back echoes to the to the past Terminator, and there's lots of callbacks to the old Terminator. They were good callbacks, as opposed to like the Resident Evil, where it's like, hi, the first five minutes of this is me telling you what happened in the last damn movie, <laughs> instead of incorporating it throughout. Um, yeah, we're, I'm not even broaching the subject <laughs> of Resident Evil because it's not, it's not germane to the point, and I I fucking hate those movies. Yes. This was 90s, right? Uh, 1991. Okay, so it's still the 80s. So I was going to say, I really like the 80s vibe, the slow pan of somebody staring off in the distance, the weird edginess of people getting tactical, all set up in, with, 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 like, no sound. There's newer movies where it's like, you just every sit, no, click, clock, click, clock, click, clock, click, clock, click, clock, click, clock. That's kind of cool, but it takes away from that, like, we're getting ready scene. It's so, like a slow tactical build up. For that scene, I was like, it's tactical, mama. But that, that, that like, that slow 80s clipping everything in, or when, like, or, or, or the comedy where they say, take your guns out, and they're like, they're, like, take 90 guns or, like, 16 swords out. I love those scenes. Really yeah, like the loadouts on this were actually very realistic. Yes. I like the fight scenes were really cool. There was lots of gunfire. I was worried at the beginning that there wasn't going to be any blood because you didn't really see much in the way the cop first died. But it was really good. Also, because this, this is a newer movie, you would expect it to be more, uh, less practical effects and more CGI. I really like the practical effects. So not only just hearing about it, but like the beginning, it wasn't just electrical lightning. It was like electrical lightning, but also this like spherical ball. It gives you an aspect of like a little bit more of the future. I like that they didn't do flashbacks to the future like in the first one, but they just one at the very beginning, and then they focused on the present day because that not that the other one didn't teach you stuff. I mean, it made it edgy, and you got to learn about stuff. But I felt like the flashbacks were way too weird in the old one. Well, and I didn't want there to be that that like weird flashback feel to it. And I know. I it was mean, more they had to in the first movie. one to explain Kyle Reese's story. Yeah, but yeah everything they, was grungy in the first movie, anyway. So the, obviously, the background scenes would be the same. Yeah, Kyle they had to establish Bez history. You, uh, and, they had to establish history in the first one. Here, here, it's you know, it's a sequel. Mm -hmm. You got to do very minimal. Uh, history, unless you're changing something major, which thank God they didn't. You can actually focus on the present because you don't act, you don't have to show the past mm -hmm. or in this case the future. They fulfilled the sequel aspects of stuff. What I mean by that is carrying on the story in an interesting way. They didn't have to re-explain anything from the past, and they were like, oh, the picture was another one, but they but they were still able to tell the story and act to it. And at no point somebody had to stop and go, hey. You need to know this information because we did a poor job of explaining it in the yeah. previous scene. <laughs> they didn't have to do that in any of this movie. They expect you to know it. They they, they incorporate it into the series. That like him dressing up, him being slow, him having stuff up his face, his eye coming in, and have to stop and like accent it with this whole scene. You just know about it. I like the aspect of Arnie learning. I like the aspect of him being like, I'm on the good guy's side now. You know, it's a good for me. <laughs> and uh, him slowly learning stuff and doing funny things. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's the aspect of the whole fight is humans versus robots and the past of it, you know, the robots are like, oh, humans are terrible. But then the idea that there's this robot that's slowly learning and that he kind of sacrifices himself for the sake of humanity. Okay, and something that uh, you're not privy to because we watched the extended edition. Mm -hmm. In the theatrical edition, they only mention that the T850 has a neural net learning computer processor and they don't go into the detail of actually pulling the chip out and resetting it. Oh, really? They just cut to the next morning. Oh. That's ah. why I, I like that. watched the extra 16-minute special edition of it. It's good. Granted, it made us stay up a little bit later, but... 
The other aspect is is they didn't they didn't make it extra cheesy, but they did put it in. And it's this aspect I really like. It's you know, mad scientist doesn't realize he's doing something bad. When he realizes he's doing something bad, he gets an opportunity to redeem himself. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it's sad that he dies, but the fact that he's holding a piece of his baby and using that as his like last final thing to destroy his work is is this like realizing that he's like come full circle from oh this is a wonderful thing it's, that's going to be great for society it's actually taking me from my family and you get to see his heart and so you care about this guy but then he also is like realizing if I'm going to destroy it I'm going to be the one to destroy it but then he's also that the, the, this I just love the, the whoever made this choice the idea that he's holding a piece of this thing as his his as, as like you know if I die it's going to destroy itself kind of a thing and I don't know if they're pushing for that or if I'm leaning too much into it but it, just him using a piece of it of this like his little baby his robo baby that he worked lots of time on it to, to destroy it all is kind of like him realizing hey this thing this thing is bad and I may die but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make and I, I'm going to use this he could just hold up anything or just like hold his hand above it and just let it smack it so that was cool I liked the Arnie shooting everybody in the knees with absolutely no emotion. What the hell are you doing? You son of a bitch! He'll live. Bang, 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 bang. That was nice. You brought up something that I wanted to uh, springboard off of. The fact that Arnie doesn't kill anybody in this movie <laughs> is bullshit. <laughs> he, he it's also beautiful. Kill anybody. He it's, it's beautiful. Batman also doesn't kill any people. <laughs> I mean, he kneecaps people with a freaking 45 ACP. But the... that is bre that is that is breaking off the. I mean, uh, the what I about the gas the the gas grenade launcher bullets? Oh, dude, the guy that got hit in the chest, he is dead. And yes. the, the guy that freaking got hit in the back, he's he's paralyzed. Maybe there's enough freaking hydrostatic shock going on to stop his heart as well. Yes. But there's no way he's living. Another thing that I liked about this movie, um, obviously it's a different decade, and they have weird 80s style late stuff at the beginning. And there's a little bit of stuff, but it doesn't, re doesn't really age. The comedy doesn't age. There wasn't anything that was like, overtly going to trigger people in this movie necessarily other than lots of guns this is this is but this, this is trigger the, me the, the comedy wasn't awkward the so what you're saying weird. is I like this is a film you can watch in. modern day and it would still be like top tier to compare to like modern day films mm, and not top tier what i mean is i would say nothing, top tier. nothing in it aged poorly not not the humor, not style, other than like the mullet and the red pants at the beginning of the movie. Oh, the yeah. mullets come back, so what? Oh, no, oh, no, yeah. no, we, it's we, just we started counting age. mullets. I think it aged well. Um, I'm watching it for the first time. It wasn't like um, watching some of the Jason movies where I was just like, Ew. oh, another thing I wanted to say. You could tell that it's long, but I feel like if I was in the theater and I wasn't around with people who repeatedly said it was long and I had snacks and I was prepared for this movie, and did, like went to pre-bathroom break. I don't feel like I would have noticed that it, I would have considered it long, but not nearly as long as it was. Because I've sat through other movies that are much longer and not realized it. So uh, on my scale, I have, I have, and it, just letting everybody know, I scale differently. I'm going to give this movie a ten. I want to watch this movie again, but I want to watch this movie again right now, mm -hmm. um, which is rare. There's not a lot of tens. It, it's not a movie that like necessarily like so totally added to my life, but it's got it's got everything. It's got good comedy. It's got story. It's got action. It's got intenseness. But it's also got the sci-fi. It's got robots. It's got um, explosions. It's 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 everything that you wish a Fast and Furious movie was. <laughs> <laughs> there was an issue with Edward Furlong's age during this film because he was hitting puberty. They had to reshoot some scenes. They he had to he talked about it with the dubbing. They had to re-record some vocal vocalization and whatnot. Um, you had mentioned during the review, or during the movie, that uh, there was a scene in an elevator. I think it was the first elevator scene. Uh, they, uh, they escaped from uh, Pascadero. It was the first elevator scene where Linda had lost permanent hearing in at least one of her ears. I think it was her right ear. 
it was it was it was one of her ears, and it was because it was during in between takes she didn't put it back in. No, 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 it fell out in the middle of a shooting a scene. They, well, either that or from what from what I read, she forgot to put it back in. But she either no either notes. way, in between takes, she lost her hearing. Um. The uh, bar scene in the very beginning was shot across from where Rodney King was uh, beaten down. Oh, okay, that's uh, that's uh, that's conjecture. I've he heard can, he can fill in. Fill I in believe that. I heard it on the commentary, but I can't remember. This is the only Terminator film that was nominated for an Oscar. It's it had, good. It had won four out of the six Oscars it was nominated for. <laughs> that's good. Four out of the six. That is impressive for a 1991 film. I bet you get special effects. Uh, it was the only and sound design. It was the only sequel to win an Academy Award until The Bourne Ultimatum came out and Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. The damaged Terminator look for Arnold took about five hours to apply and an hour to remove. Oh. Uh, Robert Patrick mimicked his head movements of a bald eagle for his role as T-1000. Oh, so he sat and watched bald eagle footage? Uh, the sound of Arnold's shotgun may have sounded a little bit louder than usual, but you want to know why? This is actually something I've never noticed. I'm actually impressed. His shotgun sound design was super loud because it was actually the sound of two cannons. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminators in the very beginning of the future um, scene and the scene where he's walking out after, as he's shooting all the cops in the knees were all animatronic. In the very last uh, trivia I have written down before he takes over, because we kind of bounce trivia back and forth during the movie, um, Linda Hamilton, who played uh, Sarah Connor, has a twin sister named Leslie, who played her nightmare look-alike during well, the nightmare scene. Well, that was good, too. She was in the nightmare scene, and she was also in the finale uh, playing the T-1000, mimicking Sarah Connor. There was also another set of twins. What was it, Dan and Dave? It was Dan and Dave. As Staten, Staten or something. It was Dan and Dave. It was during the um, the vending machine scene with the uh, the, the eye poke. The the cop, the two cops, where he poked him in the eye. There is a story that uh, during the uh, scene of uh, Linda Hamilton, you know, Sarah Connor escaping, uh, when she hits the guy with the broom hand, broom handle or mop handle. Part of that was for real because earlier in the scene when she gets tased and forced to take medication, they had to retake that so many times that she got hematomas on her knees and she wanted some payback and she got it. Okay, and the minigun that shows up twice, once during the uh, future scene and, and then during the scene that everybody who's seen that mo movie knows about. At Cyberdyne. Is the, uh, is the same movie or the same movie prop from Predator. Payback time. Oh yeah, uh, yes, uh, Robert Patrick actually was told to slow down. Oh yeah, yes! Robert Patrick's the goddamn athlete. <laughs> he outrun well, Edward fast. Furlong's slow bike. <laughs> he I rode a cop car too. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and in that scene, there's a, the, uh, during the reverse scene, backing out of the parking lot, there's a scene where they show the the first time you see the back of the car, you can see the person driving the car poking their head up from the trunk. One thing I love about this movie is all the guns. I'm mm -hmm. I'm an unapologetic I'm an unapologetic gun guy. Sorry, YouTube, but you know it's just my thing. Mm. But you know, like the you know 1911s. I mean, the, I mean a lot of the trigger discipline in this. Uh, I'm gonna post those and those. I was talking about this during the movie, but. The scene where, uh, Lin uh, I keep wanting to call her Linda, but uh, Sarah is threatening Miles Dyson with that 1911. Her staging that trigger gives me anxiety because I know how clean those triggers break. And if unless there's a lot of trigger slop in that, like as an old gun, yes. it, like as soon as you pull back on that trigger, that hammer's going forward and that round's going down the barrel. Ugh. For me, before you give your rating, I would be happy if the series ended with these two films. If Same. It was just one and two. It would have been a perfect goddamn series. I would have been simple, happy. Great. And, and no. go to Dark Fate if you want to. What's your rating on T2? Me? 
Yes. Dude, best movie of all time. You know, fight me. On a, on a scale of ten? A thousand. A thousand. So, so, in other words, but if you're not breaking the scale, it's a ten. So is this your all-time <laughs> favorite movie of all time? Actually, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was telling these guys, first movie I remember seeing in theaters at four years old. I will make my review short and sweet, since we've gone through the trivia right here, and we've gone through all the numbers and whatnot. Um, so I only have one con of this film. The only con I have this film has nothing to do with the film at all whatsoever. It's just the well-being of this one actor and this individual. What the fuck happened to Edward Furlong after this film? Because this is, this is the only film I've seen him in, and I feel like he fucking fucked himself up after this movie, because I heard nothing but bad things about this man after this movie came out. Welcome to child acting. Actually, I would want to put the blame on that on the movie American History X. I would have kept him out of, of that film. And then, in a perfect world, I would have him come back in T3 as an older individual. Well, he would have been old enough, but... He, I, I, he, would, he wouldn't have been old enough, but he would... I, I want, see, my thing is, like, have Edward Furlong reprise his role as John Connor in T3. Well, what year did T3 come out? Like, 2003. 2003? And if he was, say... 13 and 91... I, he would be like he's around the same age as Nick Stahl, which is the guy that he would have been. I, I would have said, "Hey, bring him back." Yep. Like, keep like that's my thing. But he got the, but he got fat and drugged out. The pros, everything about this movie, uh, the intro, the soundtrack, oh, the, the so soundtrack good. just so like good. the first film. The soundtrack just like the first film is fucking on par, if not. Fucking Hans Zimmer status. The only yeah, reason why it, it, it would sound like it'd be playing. a cash grab because of the title. That's about it. It's just the title, the name. Oh, no, Terminator Two. T Two sounds cool. You're like, hey, do you see T Two? T Two so good. T2, but T2, it's T2, just T2. like, like for me, like, I'm I'm one of those people. Like, there's an T2. argument out there where they're saying that when it comes to Terminator films. The first two are always the ones that get battled between back and forth. Which one are the best? I'm one of the very. I'm what I'm on the side of the argument where I say T2 is a hair better than the first one because the first one is so good, but the second one, I think, just because for the fact that there's more emotion behind the storyline, there's more like metaphors, there's more storyline, there's more meaning behind it, like. It talked about, like, children violence, like, mm-hmm. fucking gun violence, actual violence itself, how, like, uh, being a human and learning how to, like, fucking, like, you don't have to revert to violence to actually fucking get to a point, like, how, how, how Linda Hamilton said at the end, if a machine can learn how to be a human. Maybe we can too. Redemption and forgiveness. That yes. is that yeah, the, that is why this film is so important to me because it's like it's not just an action flick. It's not just boom boom pow pow cool CGI. Arnold's blowing up his liquid bullshit motherfucker. Yeah. It has deeper meaning. It gives purpose to family. Yes. Family values over yes. work values and the idea of personal sacrifice to the betterment of other and people. And stepdads are not always bad because yeah. and I'm not gonna fucking lie the T850. Is a goddamn stepdad in this movie. And the foster care system may have problems. <laughs> Hashtag Arnold Daddy. <laughs> yes, stop it. <laughs> this film is by far the most perfect sequel to any fucking action sci-fi film I've seen of all time. It is not tied, if not a hair higher, than The Dark Knight. I say that because I'm a Batman fanatic. Oh, yeah. I throw these numbers out very rarely. But for me, this film gets a 10 out of 10. Because Terminator 2 is probably the most beautiful sci-fi action film of all time. Just because the more I watch it, the more I see the deeper meaning behind it. The family, like the, the, the anti-violence in it that's not really like forced down your throat. It's just like hinted in there. Not like films nowadays. Nowadays, the anti-violence stuff is like fucking forced down your throat. This, Don't even get me started. This film, like, it talks about it, but it doesn't, like, really, it doesn't force it. It's like, hey, like, guys, like, hey, guys, like, we don't need to do this. Like, it, it does it in a more emotional, more understanding, more 
kind of a way to where like if you're not being a bitch ass bitch you'll understand <laughs> and the best way they did it was instead of shooting the security guard they just went <laughs> most intimidating duct tape rip in a movie ever. I'm not gonna lie <laughs> this film to this day the CGI still fucking holds up yeah, I don't yeah, care it's, it's been great. goddamn 20 plus years it's maybe great. 30 plus years and the CGI is better than 90% of the CGI I've seen oh, in yes. the last fucking six months Okay, for my review, what can I say that ha what these guys haven't said and what I haven't interjected on? If you haven't seen it, drop what you're doing, call into work, watch it. I don't care what edition you watch. This, they are both equal on my terms. Uh, or in my eyes, excuse me. And a lot of people say that the extended cut is superior than the theatrical, but I give you this. James Cameron stands behind the theatrical cut. Yes. But his preferred version is the extended cut. Yes. So that is greeting credence to both. But before we close out this review, because it's been it's been stretched out far long enough and yeah. all of us have to go to bed. Yeah, what, I've gotta be up for Is work there at any three in the quick morning. final thoughts we have to add before we shut this down? Um Thumbs up for Arnold, and uh, I, I, that's going in the thumbnail. This is Mike Trick 95 along with. <laughs> I'll be back in the next review. And we shall see you. But hold on, you guys forgot about me. This is Logan Dakari signing out. And we shall see you in the next review, and hopefully the lava doesn't burn us in the third one. It wasn't lava, it was steel. Peace I out. thought it was gelatin. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.